64,000 is the median number of words per book. Average person reads about 200 words per minute. Simple math will tell us that is one book in 320 minutes. To accomplish this in seven days, numbers say you would have to read for 45 minutes a day. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button, like, comment, and share. Enjoy. Hello, and happy day. How does slowing down sound to you today? Would you like to reduce the noise for just a bit? Are you ready to make a choice and decide to listen? My name is Igor S.F. Walker. I am here to remind people to slow down, to reduce the noise, to walk their lives into a natural flow. Welcome back to the Book of the Week series. Every week, as I read another amazing title, I share it with the world. Today, we look at journeys out of the body. The classic work on the out-of-body experience by Robert A. Monroe. In this video, we look at the out-of-body experience. We can formally define an OOBE, out of body experience, as an event in which the experiencer, number one, seems to perceive some portion of some environment which could not possibly be perceived from where his physical body is known to be at the time. And number two, knows at the time that he is not dreaming or fantasizing. We use our intellect and the scientific method to run some experiments in the area of the impossible. Stick around till the end. I will share with you some tools I have in use that will help you tremendously in this game of life. Discover a way to find out what actually motivates you. What innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. I will share some tools to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management. Phenomena such as telepathy, clairvoyance, precognition, and psychokinesis are impossible in terms of the current physical world view. Now, since they cannot happen, most scientists do not even bother to read the evidence indicating that they do happen. Hence, not having read the evidence, their belief in the impossibility of such phenomena is reinforced. This kind of circular reasoning in support of one's comfortable belief system is not unique to scientists by any means. But it has resulted in the very little scientific research on ESP or OOBEs, out-of-body experiences. Now, in spite of the lack of the hard scientific data, there are still a number of definite conclusions one can make from reading what material there is. First, OOBEs are a universal human experience not in the sense that they happen to large numbers of people, but in that they have happened all throughout recorded history, and there are marked similarities in the experience among people who are otherwise extremely different in terms of culture or cultural background. Second, the OOBE, out-of-body experience, is generally a once-in-a-lifetime experience seemingly experienced by accident. Illness sometimes bring it about, especially illness which are almost fatal. Great emotional stress sometimes bring it about. In many cases, it simply happens during sleep without our having any idea of what might have caused it. Third, the experience of an OOBE is usually one of the most profound experiences of a person's life and radically alters his or her beliefs. This is usually expressed as, I no longer believe in the survival of death or immortal soul. I know that I will survive death. 
the person feels that he or she has directly experienced being alive and conscious without his physical body. Robert A. Monroe is a successful businessman who began experiencing OOBEs quite unexpectedly. Coming from an academic family and having more than an average intellectual training, he realized the unusualness of these experiences and began taking systematic notes from the beginning. One thing that psychologists are reasonably sure of about human nature is that it resists change. We like the world to be the way we think it is, even if we think it's unpleasant. At least we can anticipate what might happen. Change and uncertainty have the possibilities of unsettling things happening, especially when that change doesn't take account of our desires, our wills, our egos. The most difficult mental process of all is to consider objectively any concept which, if accepted as fact, will toss and discard a lifetime of training and experience. Yet, much has already been accepted as fact on far less direct evidence than that presented here and is now accepted. It is the hope that the same will apply to the data included in this book. Well, don't be so close-minded. Try it and find out. As my old philosophy professor said, if you're blind in one eye, turn your head. And if you're blind in both eyes, then open your ears and listen. That first evidential experience always is indeed a sledgehammer blow. If accepted, the data is fact, it struck hard at nearly all of one's life experience to that date. One's training, concepts, and sense of values. For Monroe, it also shattered his faith in the totality and certainty of our culture's scientific knowledge. He was sure our scientists had all the answers, or most of them. Conversely, if I rejected what was evident to me, if to no one else, then I would also be rejecting what I respected so greatly that mankind's emancipation and upward struggle depends chiefly upon this translation of the unknown into the known through the use of intellect and the scientific principle. That was the dilemma. It may have been truly the touch of a magic wand and a gift bestowed. I still do not know. An interesting meeting was held one evening in Los Angeles. It was composed of some, some 20 assorted psychiatrists, psychologists, scientists, and the purpose of the meeting was to examine with sincerity and seriousness the experiences and experiments. If you were going through what I have been experiencing, what would you do? It was the definite opinion of the majority, more than two-thirds, that every effort should be made to continue such experimentation in the hope of enlightening and expanding man's knowledge of himself. The best introduction to Locale 2 is to suggest a room with a sign over the door saying, please check all physical concepts here. When getting accustomed to the idea of a second body, if it was an uneasy experience, Locale 2 may be hard to take. It is certain to produce emotional effects as it steps solidly upon what we have accepted as reality. Furthermore, many of our religious doctrines 
and the interpretations thereof become open to question. It is enough to say that only a small part of the visits into Lokal 2 via the second body has provided evidential data for these visits do not easily lend themselves to proof. Therefore, much of the Lokal 2 material is cautious exploration. However, several hundred experiments in this particular area have provided definite consistencies. If A plus B equals C 63 times, there is a high order of probability that A plus B will equal C the 64th time. We had no idea that sounds existed beyond the range of human hearing until we developed instruments to detect, to measure, and to create them. Until comparatively recently, those who claimed that they could hear what others could not were considered insane or persecuted as witches and sorcerers. We were able to perceive the electromagnetic spectrum only in the terms of heat and light until last century. We are still unaware of the capacity of the human brain, an electrochemical organism, in terms of transmission and reception of electromagnetic radiation. Now, with this gap unbridged, it is easy to understand why modern science has not begun to consider the ability of the human mind to penetrate an area where no serious theory has been promulgated. In Locale 2, reality is composed of deepest desires and most frantic fears. Thought is action, and no hiding layers of conditioning or inhibition shield you from others. Where honestly, honesty is the best policy, because there can be nothing else. The raw emotion, so carefully repressed in our physical civilization, is unleashed in full force. To say that it is overwhelming at first is a massive understatement. In conscious physical life, this condition would be considered psychotic. The experiment was repeatable by a formula. Number one, the setting up of the vibration condition, followed by number two, a 180 degree rotation and the appearance of the hole. The experiment was performed not once, but at least 11 times. The 180 degree rotation offers interesting speculation. The reference to out of phase and the apparent identical displacement in exact opposition deserved the attention of the physicists. Wave form studies of phase relationships applied in this case might provide a fruitful theory. Locale 3 proved to be a physical matter world almost identical to our own. Any acknowledgement of the existence of the second body immediately demands the question mankind has pondered since the day he learned to think. Do we live on? Is there life beyond the grave? Our religions say believe, have faith. This is not enough for the syllogistic thinker who seeks valid premises, who are clear-cut, leading to inescapable conclusion. If the human being has a second body, if the second body survives what we call death, if personality and character continue to exist in this new old form, what then? Again, an age-old question that pleads for an answer. On the other hand, much of what I have encountered could be some basics which have been disordered throughout hundreds of years. 
Now let's start with prayer, which is supposed to be a direct communication with God. As we are thought to pray today, it is as if a chemical formula is recited without any knowledge of the original intent or meaning of the ingredients or the way our children sing London Bridges Falling Down with no knowledge of the original meaning behind the song. Our entire civilization is filled with such irrational habits. Evidently prayer is one of those. Somewhere someone knew how to pray. Then he tried to teach others. Few of them learned the methodology, others absorbed only the words, and then the words themselves became altered and changed over the years. Gradually the technique was lost until accidentally rediscovered periodically throughout the ages. In the later cases only rarely has the rediscoverer been able to convince others that the old established way is not quite right throughout man's history. Reports have been consistent. There are demons, spirits, goblins, gremlins, and assorted subhuman entities always hanging around humanity to make life miserable. Are these myths, hallucinations? For once, suppose we do not dismiss the topic before we take a good look. Perhaps all such things do originate in the imagination. The question then is, from what source does the imagination conjure up these beings? The experiences differ from the typical dream state, principally in the following ways. Number one, continuity of some sort of conscious awareness. Number two, intellectual or emotional or blend of the two decisions made during the experience. Number three, multi-valued perception via sensory inputs or their equivalents. Number four, non-recurrence of identical patterns. And number five, development of events in sequence that seem to indicate a time lapse. The most certain statement that can be made is that when these conditions exist, you are as aware of not dreaming as you are when you are awake. These five. Conscious mind in itself, even with its memory recall patterns, is insufficient for the task of full comprehension. There's too much to be evaluated that is beyond the scope of perso conscious personal experience. Again, this demands a continuing need to organize the available data into comprehensive form and to add to that body of knowledge through the evidential experience of other conscious minds. This conscious mind has recognized its limitations. There's this use of sex amongst humans and somehow it has become thoroughly confused, disordered, and badly misunderstood. The label of evil long pinned to the subject. The underground probably ignores it as something grossly material and unworthy of any bearing in the spiritual development. Much of the same pattern has applied to religions, formal and otherwise, like food. This necessity was manipulated in man's history again and again under artificial rules and taboos to exercise control over the mass populace. To a great extent, this still applies as basic control over our desires and actions. Whether through redirection or purification, Second state sexuality is not the same as its physical echo, even once the habits and preconceptions of the latter are discarded. The barriers created and continually reinforced by social conditioning are but half of it. The physical mechanical elements themselves no longer seem to apply. For a long time, the mind will continue to translate the 
attraction, action, reaction sequence is a similar fun function occurring non-physically. As perception and control sharpen, the differences become more noticeable. How then? What then? The analogy of the opposite magnetic poles still holds. There is an acute awareness of difference, which is like radiation, as it may well be, from the sun, or fire, as felt by ones shivering with cold. It is dynamically attractive and needed. This attraction there is an intensity with the individual. Evidence has led me to believe that most, if not all, human beings leave their physical bodies in varying degrees during sleep. Subsequently, reading has proved that this idea is thousands of years old in man's history. It is, if it is a valid premise, then the action itself is not unnatural. On the other hand, conscious, willful practice of the separation from the physical is contrary to the pattern it would seem in view of the limited data available. A note of caution is in order here for those who are interested in experimenting. For once opened the doorway to this experience cannot be closed. More exactly, it is a case of you can't live with it and you can't live without it. The activity and the resultant awareness are quite incompatible with the science, religion, and mores of the society in which we live. History is true with martyrs whose only crime was nonconformity. Now, if you're interested, the research becomes commonly known. You run the risk of being labeled a freak, phony, or worse, and being ostracized. In spite of this, something extremely vital would be missing if you didn't continue to explore and investigate. There is one great obstacle to the investigation of the second body and the environment in which it operates. Perhaps it is the only major barrier. It seems to be present in all people, without exception. It may be hidden by layers of inhibition and conditioning, but when these are stripped away, the obstacle remains. This is the barrier of blind, unreasoning fear. Given only small impetus, it turns to panic and then to terror. If you consciously pass the fear barrier, you will have passed a milestone in your investigation. I'm reasonably sure that this barrier is passed unconsciously by many of us each night. The investigative process relative to the second body and its environment appears to be a melding or blending of the conscious with the supermind. Now, if this is accomplished, the fear barrier is overcome. The ability to relax is the first prerequisite, perhaps even the first step itself. It is deliberately generated, and it's both physical and mental. Included with the condition of relaxation must be the relief from any sense of time urgency. You cannot be in a hurry. You have accomplished condition B when you are able to lie indefinitely after the impressions have faded away with no nervousness and see nothing but blackness. The sense of touch goes first. You seem to have no feeling in any part of your body. Smell and taste soon follow. The auditory signals are next, and the last to fade out is vision. Condition D is the achievement of C when one is fully rested and refreshed, rather than tired and sleepy at the beginning of the exercise. Achieve the state of relaxation. Now, do this by whatever method you have found workable in your own individual case. Work to condition D or its equivalent and hold at the deepest level of relaxation possible without weakening your consciousness. 
when you have taken as much time as you need to be sure you have obtained this, mentally repeat, I will consciously perceive and remember all that I encountered during this relaxation period. I will recall in detail when I am completely awake only those matters that will be beneficial to my physical and mental well-being. Now say this mentally five times and then begin breathing through your half-open mouth. Establish the vibration waves. As you continue breathing through your half-open mouth, concentrate on the blackness in front of your closed eyes. Look first into the blackness at a spot, a foot away from your forehead. Now move your point of concentration to three feet away, and then six feet. Hold for a while until the point is firmly established. From there, turn the point 90 degrees upward on a line parallel to your body axis and reaching out above the head. Now reach for the vibrations at that spot. When you do find them, mentally bring them back into your head. Acclimatization and accommodation. This is a way of saying that you should let yourself get accustomed to the feel of this unusual condition. All fear and panic must be eliminated. When you feel the waves, like an electric shock, without pain, permeating your entire body. The best method seems to be to do nothing. Lay quietly and objectively analyze them until they fade away of their own accord. After several such experiences you will realize you're not being electrocuted. Try to avoid panicky struggling to break the paralytic condition. You can break it by sitting up by force of will. But you will be disappointed by yourself for doing so. After all, this is what you were trying to achieve out of body experience. Another word of warning is in order here. Beyond this point, I believe you cannot turn back. Ultimately, you will be committed to the reality of this other existence. Now, how this will affect your personality, your daily life, your future, and your philosophies, that rests entirely with you as an individual. For once, you have been opened to this other reality. You cannot completely shut it out again. Try as you might. The pressure of material affairs may sublime it for a bit, but it will return. You can shut it off, of course, but eventually you become too tired to bother, and you are off on another excursion. You sense that you are fighting against yourself, and who wants to fight oneself, and at a price of a good night's sleep? Conclusions reached during this period of experimentation. Number one, there does exist a second body. Interspersed or in conjunction with the physical body. Number two, the second body can move and act independently of the physical body. Number three, these movements and actions can be made partially under the control of the conscious mind. Number four, some sensory inputs in the second body are registered as they are in the physical body. Others are beyond translation. And number five, some movements in the second body occur in an identical space-time to that of the physical counterpart. Transmission and reception of information from individual to individual or from one group to another group knows no time spatiality. Through experience and education, proficiency is gained in other application of psi, such as movement and conversion of matter, direction and control 
of lesser species. And communication and association with those in the realms of non-physical matter. Now, the most frustrating are attempts to communicate with the intellectual leaders. Without exceptions, these had been unsuccessful. Research suggests this to be the result of too much concentration in the study of matter, historical rejection of all psi force phenomena, an inability to comprehend any communication other than that perceived by the sensors of light, sound, vibration of the gases envelope, and variations in electromagnetic radiation, mechanically generated and translated. There seem to be two explanations of what we now call dreams. First, a common dream may be some computer-type action of the unconscious in sorting out recently perceived data. Second, there are vividly rec recalled experiences, now called dreams, which may actually be impressions received by the second body while traveling in the released state. There may be many other varieties of some classification yet to be learned. Only research in this direction will determine this. And there you have it. Journeys out of the body. The classic work on out-of-body experience. Please do help out. It is easy. Simply like this video so more people can enjoy it. Share it too and spread the word. Do leave a comment and share your thoughts. Subscribe to my channel and stay up to date. And the link to this book is in the description below. So you buy it, you read, and you never stop learning, especially learning about yourself and nature. So gift yourself by taking the free human needs test on my website and find out what actually motivates you. What innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. And if you feel you are ready to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management even further, do check out my Master of Life Awareness program. The links are in the description below. Thank you. Love and respect.